Welcome to our Online. The fourth type of fraction we could run into is the type where we need to find the lowest common denominator. Now we could solve this one like we did before by simply multiplying all the denominators together, but we would end up with a very large denominator with very large numbers, which makes it more difficult. It's better to find the denominator, which is common to all, but the smallest possible. That's called the lowest common denominator. So the question then is, how do we find that? How do we find the denominators here so that we can easily add these fractions? Well, there's two methods to do that. The first method is to find the lowest common denominator by taking multiples of the largest one. So in this case, 8 is the largest denominator. So we'll take multiples like 16, 24, 32, and then we check to see if all the other denominators fit into the multiple of that evenly. And if we do, the first one we find is the lowest common denominator. So you do it like this. So you take 2 times 8. The reason why we don't start with 1 times 8 is because we already see that 6 doesn't evenly fit into 8, so 8 cannot be the lowest common denominator. So how about 2 times 8, which is 16? Does 4 fit evenly into 16? The answer is yes. Does 6 fit evenly into 16? The answer is no. So that cannot be the lowest common denominator. So we try the next multiple, 3 times 8, which is 24. Does 4 fit evenly into 24? The answer is yes. Does 6 fit evenly into 24? The answer is yes. If both of them fit evenly into that multiple, then we have found the lowest common denominator, which is 24 which means that these three fractions will have a 24 as a denominator. Now the question is, how do we find the numerator? Well, what we ask ourselves is, how many times do we have to multiply 4 by to get 24? We realize 4 times 6, and let's write that down here. So 4 times 6 will give us 24, which means if we multiply the denominator by 6, we must multiply the numerator by 6 as well. Here, look, and we see how many times does 6 fit into 24. The answer is 4 times. So we had to multiply the denominator by 4 to get 24, which means we must multiply the numerator by 4. And finally, to get 24 from 8, we had to multiply the denominator by 3 to get 24, which means we have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. And so now we end up with our new numerators corresponding to the new denominators. So the denominator is 24. 3 times 6 gives us a new numerator of 18. 4 times 6 gave us 24. 4 times 1 gives us 4. And 3 times 8 gave us 24. 3 times 5 gave us 15. So those are the new corresponding numerators. We had to multiply the numerators by the same factor as we did the denominator to get 24 as a common denominator. And now we can solve that fraction. So this is equal to... 18 plus 4 plus 15, that should be a 15 here, all divided over a common denominator of 24, which is equal to 37 over 24. But what about the second method? So this is a good method. It works quite quickly when the numbers are small, but when the numbers get to be big, it may be more difficult to use this method. There's another fail-safe method that works every single time. The way we do that method is we write each denominator as a product of its factors. And then we find which factor occurs the most, and wherever each factor occurs the most, we circle that and we multiply all those factors together, which then forms the LCD. So let's try that. So we take the denominator 4, which can be written as 2 times 2. So the factor 2 appears twice here. The number 6, the second denominator, can be written as 2 times 3. So we have the factor 2 that occurs once and the factor 3 that occurs once. And then we take the final denominator, 8, which can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. So you can see here the factor 2 occurs three times. So now we circle each factor where it occurs the most. So the factor 2 occurs three times here. It occurs once here and twice there, but it occurs three times there, so that's the one where we circle. The fact that 3 only occurs once, it occurs right here, nowhere else. So now you can see that the LCD will simply be the product of all the factors that we circled. So the LCD will be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. And so you can see, you can find the LCD with that method as well. The 
Both methods are great, whatever you prefer. This one typically works with smaller denominators. This one works no matter how big the denominators are. So this is kind of a fail-safe method. And that's how it's done.